We have two interesting readings for today. One coming from the book of Genesis, recounting the experience of Abraham, a person of faith, and he welcomed strange, the strangers who came to him and offered them food. And they had this dialogue. On the other hand, in the gospel, we have Jesus having this conversation with the centurion who was forcefully pleading to cure his servant. A mere servant so uh, close to the centurion that he went to Jesus, appealed to him that his servant be cured. Now, look at the attitudes of these two persons conversing with God. One, Abraham conversing with God through his messengers, the angels. On the other hand, the centurion conversing with Jesus. Both had this conversation. And since they were men of faith, the conversation led to the life-giving event in both situations. On the one hand, Abraham and Sarah had a son, Isaac. On the other hand, the centurion servant got cured. In our day-to-day -day conversations, if we are like the centurion, if we are like Abraham, both men of faith, our conversations will bring out life from the other with whom we converse, with whom we talk. Oftentimes, our mundane, our day-to-day -to -day conversations don't even reach that depth, that level that can evoke life, confidence, faith, happiness, joy, and respect. We just talk on the surface. One philosopher would call that Gerede in German. This talking without sense, or maybe nonsense, not as what mystics would call cor ad cor luquitur, or talking from one heart to the heart of the other. When we talk cor ad cor luquitur, we are able to generate, to evoke, to bring out that goodness from the other. That goodness that came out from the conversation between Abraham and the guest, the angels, who was sent by God. And the conversation of the centurion with Jesus that resulted in the restoration and reintegration of the health of the servant. How often in our day-to-day -day relationships, our conversations would lead into that. If we have faith like Abraham, remember Abraham in the chapter 12 of Genesis where he was called by Yahweh, go forth, or in Hebrew, lech, lecha, go forth. In faith alone, he went forward, trusting in God. And the centurion, not a Jew, a Roman, in faith, he trusted Jesus. When we have that openness to God, when we are able to trust people, that shows and that trust, that confidence will evoke a life-giving response to the, the person who, to whom we talk and to ourselves. And that creates a community <clears throat> where communication will generate life. When was the last time we had this? During these times of pandemic, we become tunnel 
we have our tunnel vision because we got so depressed that things around us are dark. We go to the edge of our existence so desperate, so depressed. However, let Abraham on the one hand and let the centurion on the other hand provide again that light, that excitement for life, so that our conversation with God will generate within us that life-giving response to life again. Not so down, uh, down, downcast, so depressed, anxious, so stressed out. God is always conversing with us. He visits us daily. In fact, in Psalm 139, it, the psalmist says, God is in us. Every fiber of our being, God is there. Rediscover that. When we have arrived at that discovery, our conversation will be life-generating. 